Hi, I'm Crash Power. Join me as I dive in the world of COD Zombies and challenge myself to uncover just how it revolutionized gaming forever. Call of Duty Zombies, or COD Zombies, is a game mode that is taking the world by storm. Emerging from the Call of Duty franchise, this co-op survivable horror experience has become a staple in the gaming community. Before COD Zombies, the gaming industry was plagued with repetitive gameplay and a lack of engaging co-op modes. Games were often designed with single player experiences in mind, leaving players craving more social interaction and cooperative play. The few co-op game modes that existed were often tacked on as an afterthought, lacking the depth and complexity gamers desired. This led to a stale gaming landscape where players were stuck in a cycle of monotony. The industry was in dire need of a change, and that change came in the form of COD Zombies. As the years went by, gamers continued to crave something new and exciting. The repetitive gameplay and lack of co-op innovation led to a decline in player engagement. Games were being released with similar mechanics and game modes, and the industry was starting to stagnate. It was clear that something needed to be done to shake things up and bring excitement back to gaming. This was the perfect storm for COD Zombies to take center stage and revolutionize the gaming industry. The industry was in a state of flux, and COD Zombies was the much-needed breath of fresh air. Its unique blend of co-op gameplay, survivor horror elements, and Easter eggs was a game changer. Players were no longer limited to a solitary experiences, and the thrill of playing with friends was reborn. The industry was finally starting to take notice of the power of cooperative gameplay, and COD Zombies was leading the charge. What's really just fascinating is how the zombie mode was created in the first place. Jason Blundell, the former director of Zombies at Treyarch, said in an interview, there was a real worry about it because we were making a very serious World War II Pacific campaign story in which, in true Call of Duty historical fashion, had a dark edge to it. It was one of our first mature games, so there was a lot of blood and dismemberment and that kind of stuff, and we were dealing with very serious subject matter. But we also had this zombie thing that people can't stop playing in the studio, even after working long hours and all that great campaign stuff. It all started with a German soldier who was on fire. World at War was a very sustained development. We had a lot of very passionate, talented people working very hard to make stuff. And it was always going to be right down to the wire. There were a couple of scripters who started playing with the on-fire animations we had because the World at War introduced a flamethrower. Uh, there was this kind of rawr, you know, like the 80s movie thing when people are on fire and fall down. And they took that, and that was the basis of the beginnings of the zombie stumble and movement. Bundell continued, and then we took a bit of geo we got from one of the levels and cut it out. And that kind of basis became Knot, which was the first map in Call of Duty World at War. We were working very long hours, but people started to pop their head around and have a look. People from each department. So sound would be like, I can give you a brrrr sound and the characters, well, I can give you a zombie head or two. And if you look back at the original stuff, it's very much made from pieces. The original zombie mode was made from leftover pieces and bits from people's spare time. This was a secret game, a mini mode, an Easter egg, whatever you want to call it, crafted from the passion and creativity of a team with little free time and yet they believed in it utterly. So much, in fact, that Treyarch decided to present it to Activision to see if they could include it in the game. Let's pause for a second here and consider how bold a move that actually was. During the late 2000s, Activision had a reputation, and whether this is fair or not, I can only speculate based on my dealing with them as an editor of being a commerce-driven publisher. Okay, everyone who publishes video game wants to make money, but its Activation's reputation was about mega franchises delivered to a set schedule, regardless of what it took to meet the deadlines. And Call of Duty was the crown jewel of the franchise, more so than ever, Modern Warfare. The conversation about introducing a rather frivolous zombie minigame to a multi-million dollar franchise is, well, a very careful one. Blundell explained it got shown to the director of World at War at the time, and he was like, it's great and I can't put it down. But how the hell are we going to surely, we can't do this. And so we had to bring it to Activision executives over one at a time and just say, sit down, have a play, don't get worried. The game's doing great, but have a look at this thing. By this time, Zombies was a very playable experience, but still utterly basic. The animators had taken a new mantle animations from the main game, 
which then allows zombies to pour in through uh, undefected windows. The UI guys worked up a proper scoring system and a wave counter. It was, however, more or less the game that finally shipped with World at War. The team only really knew it would happen when Activision execs started sending emails back and forth about how far they'd managed to get through the mode. They said, we've got to the point where they're sending emails about what round they got to. And that's when they knew they could do this, that Treyarch could get away with this. Getting away with it was one thing, but turning it into the phenomenon it came was quite another. Activision was sold on its inclusion but still clearly worried that it would distract players from the core campaign and multiplayer on which COD built its sturdy foundations. Blundell explained, the deal, interesting enough, the deal that got struck about it was, okay, you can put it in, but don't talk about it. We're not gonna promote it. We're not gonna market it. It was going to be, we'll put it in at the end and see what turns out. You could only play the mode after you beat the campaign. It hid itself before then. The result is a series that's been getting stronger and bigger for the past eight years. After the initial release of World at War, the buzz around Zombies Mode spread around the community like wildfire, and COD players really took it to heart. I remember playing it with friends who I'd known since university. Friends nowhere near as immersed in the World at War video games as me, who absolutely adored it. We played for hours on end, late into the night, pushing to access the whole level, working out strategies, you know, leave the last one alive but legless so we can barricade the windows again, and praying to the gods of COD that our next spin at the random gun box would be an alien blaster and not another stupid sniper rifle. Turns out the rest of the community was taking things even further inventing stories for characters and working out justifications for zombies to even exist inside the Call of Duty universe. The thing that people don't remember today is there was no voiceover. We didn't have any voiceover because we didn't have the money for voiceover actors or any of that stuff. The community started to write, why were you there? What the intro was about? Who these people were? Essentially those heroes just character models from the World of War campaign. So the American, the Japanese, the Russian, and the German. And only when we got the DLC season, it was decided, let's put a little bit more resources behind this. All right, let's put a zombie map in. Let's see if this community follows this. And they just loved it, and they were eating it up. Con Zombies introduced innovative mechanics that set it apart from other games. Its unique gameplay, which featured a blend of cooperative play and survival horror elements, was a departure from the traditional first-party shooting experience. The story elements, which were often cryptic and full of mysteries, added a layer of complexity and depth to the game. And the introduction of Easter eggs hidden throughout the maps added an extra layer of excitement and discovery. These innovations not only set COD Zombies apart, but also raised the bar for future games. The impact of COD Zombies was felt across the gaming industry. Its influence can be seen in games such as Left 4 Dead, World War Z, and even other Call of Duty titles. The co-op survival horror game genre was born, and players retreated to a proliferation of new and exciting experiences. COD Zombies had become a cultural phenomenon, and its influence was undeniable. Cotton Zombies continued to evolve and innovate, pushing the boundaries of what was possible in cooperative gameplay. Its cultural significance was cemented and became a staple in gaming culture. Players from around the world came together to share their experiences, strategies, and theories about the game. The community was thriving, and COD Zombies was at the heart of it. COD Zombies' impact on the gaming industry cannot be overstated. It changed the way developers approach cooperative gameplay, and its influence can still be seen today. It's shown the world that co-op gaming didn't have to be an afterthought, but rather a central feature in the gaming experience. COD Zombies revolutionized gaming forever, leaving a lasting legacy in the world of multiplayer gaming. In conclusion, COD Zombies' impact on the gaming industry has been profound. From its humble beginnings to its current status as a cultural phenomenon, it's left an indelible mark on the gaming landscape. And we look to its future, it's clear that COD Zombies will continue to be a driving force behind innovation and cooperative gameplay. So what's your favorite COD Zombie memory? Share your experiences with me in the comments below. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for more content on gaming innovations and revolutions. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Crash Power. I'll catch you in the next video.